Hi, welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Sean. <laughs> I'm Jill. And today we're actually going to install the auxiliary switches into the Big Bend. Now, this vehicle did not come with it. We did not order this vehicle. We found this on the lot. Nobody wanted it because it is a four-cylinder is a four-cylinder manual. Nobody wants a four-cylinder manual. It seems like they either want a four-cylinder automatic or they want a six-cylinder automatic, which you can't get a manual six cylinder anyways, but um, this was not optioned with that. For whatever reason, somebody didn't uh, either forgot or did not Check want it, it <laughs> and then decided not to have the vehicle. Now we picked it up with a possibility of actually doing this. Now we did a video a while ago with what you need to do and what we found by pulling apart the vehicle if it's just as easy as installing the switch panel and that's it that is not what we found so of all the people who watched the video saying oh you just didn't look far enough we will show you kind of what the vehicle looks like and the differences between the harness and also the fuse box which you also have to change now there is a program in the background that will show like a part number difference change that will throw a code for Ford to see. Uh, the take it to the service department, it'll show up on their system. This is not needed from what I understand. We haven't done it yet, so we'll figure it out when we uh, do it. Um, I can't answer that question either because I haven't had experience with anything like this, so don't even ask me for, hey, Jill. <laughs> but at the end of the video, you'll know, especially down below, uh, you'll see comments, probably, you know, what needs to happen. Now, like I said, there is a program. We might do it. I don't know if we're going to. It is a possibility. It depends on the program. We'll talk to a service department and go through the process. I will put a link down below to show you where the process is and what you need to do. I believe uh, it's on or it's still on Bronco 6G. A gentleman named Rusty actually did it and he lives around me. We just haven't met. Uh, he's the one that actually figured this out, and I have to give him props for that and give him credit for actually doing that. Yeah, Rusty uh, and uh, Sean been in touch quite often during that whole process. So he used the videos I put out to remove all the panels. They helped him a lot, so, you know, thank you for using my videos and kind of shouting me out for that when you did it. That'll be linked down below. And... We're not going to show you that today. All the panels are removed right now, including a couple we didn't uh, remove, and we will go through that at the end of the video. But right now, we'll show you uh, what we have. So right now, if you guys can see, you have a harness that goes up here. We already have all these panels off, the panel that goes down here, the uh, grab yeah, handles yeah. on both sides, the panels right here, as well as uh, the panels here, which you need to remove. So it's it's a pretty entailed removal of all the panels. Yeah. Now, the harness you're looking at that everybody talks about is this harness right here. This harness right here is the one that is different than the one with the upfitter switches. There is no extra plug here. And we'll show you when we get the other harness and we actually lay these two out to show you the difference. So, I will go ahead and pull this harness out. It's pretty simple. As soon as Jill goes to hold it. As I've stated before, get one of these kits. They really help. We've used this throughout the entire removal system. Now there's one thing you want to look at. This right here is the, the uh, wire you want to look at for the other one for the other harness it is on the other harness as well so i'll give you an orientation of which way this harness goes there's only one on this side and this to actually go through the roof right here the upper pillar to go to lights that you want to install or whatever outside uh, component you want to install on that so we'll go ahead and lay this down we'll switch places and i'll grab the other side same thing. 
I'll go grab the other plug. First and foremost, you guys can tell the difference between the different panels. You have this with the sunglass case, you have this with the uh, auxiliary switches. Now, everything's the same except for this portion right here. I believe you can order just this, but there's no way to install this into here easily. So I ordered the whole thing. I don't know the part number for just this. I know the part number for this right here, the entire thing. Uh, this right here is the harness. Now, as you can tell, the harness is a little bit thicker because there is more wiring. The plug you are looking for that is not on this harness is this plug right here. As you can tell, you have the microphone wire, which is here. You have the wire that goes into the front windshield, uh, into the system for like the, the uh, lighting and stuff like that, or the sensors, goes right here. You have this right here, which goes to all these lights right there. This right here, I don't know what it goes to. It doesn't have it on this vehicle. There's no other plug. And then these right here are your window or your, um, oh, what is it called? The mirror lights, which this doesn't have. Oh, the lighted mirrors? Yeah, the lighted mirrors. Uh, lighted. Now, when I say lighted mirrors, I mean the vanity mirrors. When you open them up, it has a light in it. Yeah. This one isn't equipped with it, so it doesn't have it. It so, has the plugs now. Lighted sun visor mirrors. Vanity yeah, mirrors, vanity what are you talking about? So for all those people who said that that plug is on this harness, it is not. Can you wire in this plug in this harness? Probably, but I think that would be monumentally hard compared to just buying the harness right now, because right now you have all these wires in here wired up you don't have to guess which one it is. If you can get the wiring program for it, by all means do it. Uh, it'll probably won't save you much money because you still gotta buy the plug. Um, where you get that, I have no idea. Now, this is just the interior components that we need to change out. We're gonna go ahead and throw them in there. With one thing to, when I told you, this right here is the orientation on the passenger side. This right here, is this wire. So make sure when you wire this up, this goes on the passenger side because you can put these on the other sides and it might not work. So we wanna make sure that the wire that goes to the passenger side up in the visor or up above the visor goes to the passenger side, not swap it. So we'll go ahead and clean this up real quick. Yeah, in fact, when I, we were trying to lay this out inside the vehicle, to figure out the orientation of it, we had it backwards. And that's when we learned about that little wire right here. So like you said, keep that on the passenger side because if this ends up on the driver's side, you need to flip your harness around. With an orientation the right way, which is that wire on her side, we'll go ahead and start connecting it from one side to the other. It does not matter. Uh, just make sure all the plugs are in and then all the connections where you have to mount the wire is. And one good thing about the harness is coming like this from factory, or at least from the dealership, is they have all these little clips already on there that way you don't have to worry about trying to install them yourself if you try to cut into it. Now, this right here, when I was talking about the plug that goes in the windshield, wait till the Harley goes by. Uh, this right here is the plug that goes on this. So it's these sensors right here. I have the mirror pushed down a little bit, but it's the sensors right here that go in. Um, which way it goes? Like that. So the little push pin sticks out this way. I'm gonna open up the door. Now the rest of the wires go onto the header panel, which we'll yeah. grab in just a second. In fact, I have to go back in the back and grab it. So I'll be right back. So remember when I said the plug right here, this right here goes to this. So this right here is the plug that goes to your switches. So it goes in there. 
this right here goes into the uh, microphone switch. And then this one goes to right back, right back here, but I won't do that just yet. Okay. okay, as you can tell, the hole is that way. It's like an odd shape. Um, you have the, the little flat side-ish here and the cone here, the plug goes down towards the bottom and then you just twist everything. I could put this all together and then put it on, but it makes it such a pain in the butt to try to move stuff around with this panel this wide. Yeah. So all I have to do now is put the four screws in to actually hold this panel together. You cannot take these this panel out without removing this panel. Somebody in the video said, or somebody in the comments said, oh, you can take it out without doing it. No. You can't because... There are four screws holding that panel together. If yeah. you take this panel out, you will snap the mounts that actually hold that in. So... We're gonna show you where those screws go. But yeah, you cannot take the overhead console out without taking your header panel out. There's just no way. Not like you're willing to like break something in the process. Feel free. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be responsible. I told you so. <laughs> we'll come to mind. Uh, but I mean, if if you can do it without pulling the panel out, I would love to see a video of how you do it. So the screws are going to go. This tab, these two tabs here. And then, yeah, the and then two, two tabs, tabs on there. the other side. They are very small. They are uh, 15 millimeter. No, it's just oh. 15. Uh, oh, Torx? Torx Plus 15. This pink thing that's right behind Sean's head, that is the airbag curtain. That is the side airbag curtain. Make sure when you start, when you take these panels off, that you disconnect the battery. That way you don't accidentally, God forbid, deploy the airbags. The last of the components that we need to install or whatever, this plug doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we don't have the system that's there. Yeah, so the system that he's talking about is like adaptive cruise control and things like that. To, the little nannies. Lane assist. This is, by all means, a default Bronco. This is what you get when you click on build a Bronco and you don't select anything. Yeah. So this for is the, the big option. Bend. Yes, for okay. the big bend. So right now you have a these little clips right here. So you have this one right here, which goes here. You have this one that slides on here. You have one that slides on here, here. Uh, this goes in there. there. So. So there's a seal that's right here that when you put this up, if it's not correct, it'll actually be underneath it. You don't want that, you want it up. Now, this right here is not all the way up right here. Uh, it needs to go up a little bit further. I believe the, uh, what do you call the it? The sun visor. The sun visor will actually pull this all the way up where it needs to be, but everything else is, is in there. Now, what we are gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and start the vehicle. So I don't know if you guys can see it. Right now it's just off, and now it has the light in it, which means I have power to this. The only bad thing is I do not have power to the wires that these go to. Okay, now that we have this in, we have pretty lights. We made sure that they all worked, <laughs> but that's all they are right now. There is no power from this to the wires that are ran through the car, uh, like the one up here. Yeah. You do not have a uh, power to those wires. And the reason you don't have power to the wires is because you don't have a fuse box that has the, the uh, fuses in them. Now, when I say the fuses, I don't mean just the fuses themselves, because that's easy. I could just throw in a fuse and we're, we're good. But for whatever reason, Ford's brilliance did not 
put the the, uh, the, little the connectors, connectors inside the fuse box, so the terminal connectors for those fuses in those locations. We've already went through that on a video before of how to remove it and how to 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 show you what there is or what there isn't. That there's link, no there's no way in the bottom too. There's no way to even try to put a fuse in there and work because it nope. it there's nothing underneath it uh, i took pictures of it uh, so the next step is now that i have nice pretty lights is to actually make it functional we're not going to put any of these panels in just yet we want to make sure that the fuse box works that way we don't have to pull anything else out so this is the panel you're looking at this right here is the bolt that's right here you need to pull that out and, it, and this is what it looks like. So it's a little clip that goes in and slides in there. The bolt does not come out. It is a captive bolt. It's got a locking washer on it uh, to hold it in so it won't go anywhere. Um, you also have to remove this bolt. The reason you have to remove this bolt and this bracket is because when you pull this out, this is right up against it. So this right here is right here. You'll not get this off without taking this off without cutting this. So yes, you could probably get it out, but you're probably gonna cut your airbag. Now, before you take any of these panels out and get too gung-ho in removing them, disconnect your battery. We disconnected our battery once we started taking off the panels here. Uh, obviously, the ones on the handles and stuff like that, we didn't worry about. But once we started messing with the airbags, we did take the panels off. The last thing you want to do is disconnect something and have that thing blow up in you or blow up on you. Uh, especially when you're holding a wrench or a ratchet or a screwdriver or whatever, that probably isn't a good idea. So yeah, be you safe. Keep in mind that these airbags do have explosive charges and they do come out at least well over 100 miles an hour. So they're designed to, you know, to deploy very quickly in mm. case of an accident. So the last thing you want to do is get impaled by your own tools. <laughs> Yeah, so be safe. Disconnect the battery. Be very safe and disconnect the battery before you start any of this process. Uh, our battery is still connected just because we weren't going to mess with any of the panels or any of the thing. Now, granted, we just pulled this off. That's just a bracket or whatever, but we didn't pull any of the harnesses off for this. Um, under the hood. Pop her open. First off, I have both of the uh, fuse boxes here and when i talk about it has the placement for the fuses but it doesn't have any uh internals for it meaning the connections that actually go from the fuse to the actual harness itself and i'll show you in just a second now this right here is the one i purchased it has all the plugs uh or fuses for the uh the lights and the the uh, auxiliary switches like the 10 amp switches here, here, uh, 15s here. But when I tell you the internals, so let's flip this one over. Let's say, for instance, this one right here, right? So this plug or slot has a 15 amp fuse. Now, if you look out on this side, there's no spot where these spades come out. There's nothing there. So when I flip this over, you can see there's a spade right there. This one doesn't have it, this one does. So it does not matter if you put a 15 amp fuse in here, which if I can pull it out without breaking it. Come on. There we go. This right here doesn't go anywhere. Because see how it's blank, doesn't have any spots? Now look at this. This has a couple spots right there for this fuse to actually connect. So even if you have it in there, it's not going to do anything. It doesn't have anything to grab a hold of. Well, this one right there. So when I say you can't just throw a fuse in there, you literally can't throw a fuse in there. There's no place to actually connect it. Um, now let me go up here and show you a little 
be careful things. So in the center of the fuse box, there's three bolts. These right here are the three bolts you're looking for. Now, when you go to put this back down, it will fit in all these slots. Be very careful, go down straight. If you feel any pressure, do not force it, just let it go. Um, also, you have these right here, which go to the fuse box. We took those off, they don't come with a new fuse box. So let's go ahead and put these in very carefully. Grab the right one so I don't go through and put the old one back in again. <laughs> that that suck. might suck. <laughs> go down evenly. Don't crank on one until you get the other one in. Uh, that way it's nice and even. Now what we will do is we will connect everything connect everything back the way we did, put in the battery. The reason we did the battery is because it's a lot easier to maneuver around it than... Yeah, which it out of there doesn't have it in the way. So if Joe wants to step out of the way, we'll move all this stuff out of there. Just in case, I'll do a little test on starting up the engine, making sure everything works. Yep, we good. Okay. I did not short out the entire uh, Bronco. That's good. Right? <laughs> you didn't short out anything, so that's good. Good. Uh, so now, all we got to do now is connect this wire real quick to whichever wire we pick, which would probably be the one that was uh, the 30 amp fuse, I think. And then we'll be right back and then show you the end results of this upfitter switch is actually working for the lights itself. Okay, be right back. So we have the wiring all hooked up. Now that we have it, I'll leave that closed for a little bit. So it didn't take all the covers off. We took one cover off. Now before we didn't have any way to connect this via the auxiliary switches so if joe wants to come around to the whichever side now auxiliary switch on now go outside and check that light working yep yep so there you go um what we need to do, and we're not gonna do it today because obviously the sun's going down, uh, we may do it a later video, is what's behind the scenes with the, the uh, program. So it will throw, from what I understand, it will throw a part number difference code in the uh, computer. Is it gonna affect your vehicle? I don't know. I don't think so because it's just a code from what I understand from the parts department that we work with and other people it doesn't do anything it's just a code in the background like deep in the background uh, we do want to change that so that way it looks stock completely does it matter no probably not the the only bad thing is is you have to get the service department manual downloaded onto your computer and it's a $500 plug that literally is about that big that you have to buy to be able to do it. Most people aren't going to do that. I will do it because I know if I have to go into other vehicles, I'll have that plug. But again, it's up to you. I will do it. I won't, I won't put it on this video. This video is long enough. It will be another video for just that. And we'll go in depth on how to do it. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> hope you guys enjoy it uh 
please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll be doing more with this vehicle. We are gonna wire up the lights properly. Right now, they're just kind of generically ran. We actually disconnected those lights, the uh, ditch lights, because we're gonna wire them up to the upfitter switches or auxiliary switches uh, later on this weekend. So um, after that, we'll show you a picture of everything together. Kind of uh, now we finally got it done. Follow us on Instagram, you'll see it there. We'll show you just how much light all these godforsaken lights actually put out. So we'll go out at night sometime and uh, try to blind some deer. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you next video.